Colleen McLaren has a book. It's called Royal Fever, The British Monarchy in Consumer Culture. In an interview, Colleen said that there's a difficulty in controlling what is known as the brand in terms of the family brand. She says that the family brand has actually been broken apart because by Harry and Meghan leaving and setting up their own brand, a brand which the family cannot control, then she says it's almost become a competitive brand. So it's really an ancient concept, isn't it? You have the idea of a rival court. And that rival court, of course, would be that of two brothers or brother and sister. If the sister has aspirations for leadership or sovereignty. So having a rival court, you'll have one brand or one branch of the royal family in the United Kingdom and the other branch in the United States. And that branch would be out of the reach or control of the main branch of the family. She says that Harry and Meghan has their own version of royalty and that that's what they're taking forward. And she says that in a way they're kind of showing up the very traditional royal family brand with a more um, up-to-date brand of royalty here in the United States. She says even though they're, they are like interpreting or creating a new brand of royalty, it's important that they keep in touch with the, you know, older branch of the family or, 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 I'm, or I'm sorry, shouldn't call them the older branch, but you know what I mean, the home branch of royalty, that they should really take their cues from the older branch of royalty, the older original, the original. She also says that the author, she's saying that they have launched their own brand as somewhat of a rebel royal brand and that their the real value, the currency of their brand is the fact that they are considered to be the underdogs. And of course, you know, the United States, don't we love an underdog? And she says that being the underdog is actually a very successful way to have your product or your brand viewed as being that of the underdog. She said it's very well trotten is the word that she used. And I'll just say, yeah, it works out very well. And, and of course it does. I purchase things that I may or may not need based on brand loyalty um, or because I just like a person I can't tell you how many things like my Nikon camera that I purchased because it was Oprah's favorite thing or flying American Airlines because it was Oprah's favorite thing. I have spent a lot of money because it was Oprah's favorite thing or Oprah said to do it. Because of the conflict with the family, it puts them in a position where they are trying to overcome a conflict with the royal family. and part of overcoming that conflict is that people like myself and the Sussex squad and anybody else who um, like or love Meghan and Harry, you want to see them overcome. You want to see them successful. You have that camaraderie of fighting the oppressor. Pauline McLaren says that both sides, or should I say both brothers, both families seem to be competing for Diana's legacy and she said she's very interested in seeing how this ends but she said unfortunately that this is going to go on for a long time with both sides vying for the legacy of Diana and she even says that Diana's position in the family has been reinstated by this competition to identify with the Princess of Wales. Colleen, um, I'm sorry, Pauline McLaren says that their brand is a lot stronger with a royal connection than without, and that part of what makes it appealing in the long run may be the connection to the family. I, I don't, 
I, I think Pauline is, um, I don't think she's actually American, and but she is, you know, she's, she's a very bright person, and I think she understands branding probably better than most people, so I'll take her word for it, but then I also, I'm thinking, you know, it really depends on which side of the, um, huh, I guess, which side of the product placement they fall upon and which type of products. So I, there's a lot of people in the United States right now that are famous for absolutely no reason. So I think that, yes, they do need to stay elevated above some of, you know, we can't have the Duke of Sussex pushing chicken nuggets, although it would be fun, but we don't really want that for the Sussex brand. I know I don't. I would love to see them doing more things in line of like the Obamas or the Clintons instead of uh, something that is like, you know, the more run-of-the-mill consumer brands. I mean, if Harry is wearing an Omega watch and, you know, talking about the Invictus game or something like that, or, you know, wearing a Rolex or or even Ralph Lauren, for God's sakes, I think I could appreciate that, um, especially if, if, you know, a portion of the money goes toward charity. I could really um, appreciate that. And let's face it, Harry is pretty fit. He'll look great in whatever he wears. And as for the Duchess of Sussex, a uh, plan, uh, a plan, but the brand placement for her is something she has experience with. And of course, if she um, starts to take again, I mean, they have a, a lifestyle that is quite appealing to young consumers. And I see no reason why they could not carry that into some type of sustainable income. So yeah, it, I, I appreciate what Pauline is saying, but I don't know that the royal connections are as important on this side of the Atlantic as it would be any place else. And as I said, I think she's um, a non-American saying these things. But again, I'm going to defer to her because She's the one who just authored a book about branding. Uh, so I'm going to assume she knows better than I do. So that's that's all I can say for that. Please let me know what you think about this in the comments. I, I'm, I'm curious to see how this is going to work out. I'm sure they have some of the best and the brightest working with the Sussexes right now. And we're going to have to depend on them to make sure that they go in the right direction. This is um, a bit of a puzzle because um, there's never been anything like this before. You know, people love to make the comparison of Wallace Simpson and the Duchess of Sussex. I cringe when I hear that because the Duchess of Sussex is an incredibly well-educated person compared to the other, you know, well-educated person, um, Wallace Simpson. But what she educated herself with was fine dining, couture fashions, and men. Basically, she always managed to land on her feet because of her marriages, which were, what is it, three of them? Um, she needed that because back in those days, women didn't have a lot of options. Maybe if she was born in a different time, things may have been different for her, but um, back in those days, a woman in her position had to make their money the old-fashioned way. They earned it. <laughs> the Windsors, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, Wallace Simpson, um, th that was another era. They were considered to be some of the biggest freeloaders ever. Their way of, like, getting by was the allowance that they received from the um, royal family, whatever income or pension he received, which, of course, um, that was more money than most people would ever have in a lifetime. But then they were also big freeloaders. 
having them at a dinner party or having them for a weekend shooting party or something of that effect, it added a little class to the occasion. So they were used to traveling the world. They had an apartment at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. They lived very well. Um, whatever you think of them, they lived very well. Well, in this case, um, the Sussexes are cut off. And just remember, people assumed that they were going to struggle. The royal family seemed to hope that they would fail. But it turns out that even though the death knell was supposed to be losing the Sussex royal, um, they actually managed to launch Archwell. And along with that, they got some very lucrative contracts which was enough to pay off that got off of Frogmore and to buy a home of their own. So, you know, bravo. Prince Harry is a property owner in California. This, again, as I say, this is uncharted territory. And this type of rival court in this information age that we live in is vastly different from the experience that the Duke of Windsor and Wallace Simpson experienced when he left the United Kingdom. So that's it. I don't think I'm going to add anything else to this, but <laughs> okay. One last thing. As Queen Latifah said in the movie Chicago, man, you can't buy that kind of publicity. <laughs> uh, they're going to be okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 